Hey everybody, Marcus back here with a Vaden Tips video. This week we're going to talk about making REST API calls from a Spring Boot based Vaden Fusion application. Now, if you're using Spring Boot without Vaden Fusion on the front end, or if you're using Spring Boot alone without a front end framework, the tips here will work for you as well. You can check the bookmarks in the description below for the timestamps you might want to jump to. So what I want to do is build a simple weather application that uses the open weather map API and it allows us to get the weather for a latitude longitude location. And we're going to display that in a web browser first by doing a API call directly from the browser and then we're going to take a look at how we can move that API call to the server so that we don't expose the API key to the client. All right, so I'm going to create a new Vaden Fusion application using the Vaden CLI. I'm going to create an empty application, so essentially just one empty view for us to use. So we're going to go into the new folder, and in here, I want to first of all open this with VS Code. And while we're looking at this, I'm also going to start the Maven build process just so we can fetch all the dependencies we need and, and build everything. Now, if we take a look at the actual code here, you'll see that we have a single application class that launches the Spring Boot application and a uh, browser launcher for that. Then in the front end folder, we have, we have a single view, emptyview.ts, where we can start building our application. Now, as this is still starting up, what I want to do is just take a look at what the REST API will return for us. So I have a REST client uh, plugin in VS Code, and what I can do is I'll create a REST.HTTP file here. And what we can do now is go into the API documentation here and copy one of these. So in this case, the result will be the same regardless of which of these calls we make. But we don't have the latitude and longitude data in our in our scratch file here, so I'm gonna instead copy this API call. We're gonna use HTTPS for this, and then we need the API key, like I said. And the API key I can generate from here. And I'll reset that before I publish the video, so don't worry. Alright, so we have this. We can send the request and take a look at what we get back. So we get essentially a object with coordinates, whether uh, we get the main object here that tells us the temperature, humidity, pressure, and then finally we have the name of the place. Now, I don't want to use Kelvin for uh, units, so I can specify the units here. Say units is equal metric like this, and then if we send the request, we can see that we get the metric units here. All right, so let's go back into the empty view here. And let's open up the app here on the side. So like I said, the first thing I want to do is make the call directly from the browser. So if you have an API, typically that doesn't require authentication, if it's just an open API to fetch some kind of data, the easiest way might be to just fetch that data directly from, from the browser. So let's take a look at that first of all. Now the empty view we have here is a Vaden Fusion view that's based on lit element. And what I'll do is I'll define two pieces of state that we can use to render the template. The first will be the weather object, so the result from, from this API call. And the second will be just a toggle uh, telling us whether we're actively loading something or not so that we can disable uh, some things and show some meaningful loading messages. So I'll import uh, state from lit element, and then I'll define those two state variables. So first of all, we'll have a state for the weather. And this will just be of type any right now because I don't feel like creating the type information for that right now. And then the other uh, state that we have will be this loading state, which will just be false for for now. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a just a simple template here. So we'll have a h1 maybe saying weather app and then we'll add a Vaden button that we can click on to fetch the data. That way the user can kind of fetch the data when they need to. So we'll create a new Vaden 
button and we need to import that so import button button if I can type like that and the button here what I want to do is I want to take the click event I want to bind that to a method on this up uh, on this view so this dot fetch weather and we'll create that I'm also set setting the theme attribute to primary and what I want to do is I want to disable this button when we have an ongoing request so that somebody doesn't just keep clicking it and requesting uh, weather over and over if it takes a while for that to return. So disabled is equal to this dot loading. All right, um, for the button's caption, what I want to do is also use that loading state to my advantage. So here we'll say this dot loading and check it. If it is loading, we'll say loading weather dot 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 and if not we'll say fetch weather like that and then we need to implement this fetch weather uh, method here so fetch weather and what I want to do here is I want to well first of all let's remember to say this this dot loading is equal to true then what we want to do is use the navigator's uh, geolocation API. So navigator dot geolocation dot get current position, and this will get a callback with the location, or I think they call it the position. So position, and once we have the position, we can actually make that call. So we're going to use the fetch API, which is an asynchronous API, and uh, returning a promise so we can use the async keyword here let me close that uh, to make this a little bit uh, nicer to read so what I want to do is first of all just make the API request and get the just the raw JSON back from there just the raw result so I'll save that in a variable called result and this will wait for the fetch to finish and here I'll use a template literal and we'll go back to the API documentation and copy over this URL. So we'll paste that in there. We'll turn these into interpolations and and the, the API key again we can go and copy from here. Alright so the latitude we can get from the position coordinates latitude and the same for the longitude position, coordinates, longitude, like that. All right, so now we have the result, raw result, and what we want to do then is take that JSON, turn it into an object that we can store in that weather state. So this dot weather is equal to uh, await result dot JSON. All right, so now if all goes well, if we click on fetch weather, We'll see that it says loading weather, and after a while, hopefully, well, obviously it's not going to do anything since we don't ever reset it. So once everything is done, we should say this dot loading is equal to false, like that. All right, so let's try this again: fetch weather, loading weather, and a while later, hopefully, yeah, it finishes. Now, obviously, we're not displaying that weather anywhere, so let's take care of that. Again, uh, we're gonna check if we have a weather set. So if we do, we'll return an HTML snippet. And if we don't, we'll return a different snippet. So let's start with if we have the weather. So we can do an H2 here saying that weather for, and then we'll take out some of that data. So if you remember the weather had a name attribute with the name of the city and then we'll make an unordered list displaying some of the other attributes so let's do a list item here for uh, this dot weather dot main dot temp for the temperature and that'll be degrees centigrade or actually it's going to be Kelvin because I forgot to actually add this um, units equal 
metric. Let's fix that. All right, and in addition to that, we'll do a, another list item here with this dot weather dot main dot humidity percent humidity like that. And if the weather is not set, we can just maybe do a little paragraph tag saying you no know, weather available. Okay. And finally, this is really bugging me that it's touching, so I'm just going to load up the CSS file here, empty view CSS, and I'll add a little bit of padding here. Padding uh, Lumo space medium. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so let's try this out. We'll fetch the weather. And hopefully, if things go well, we'll see that the weather for right here is 23.4 degrees Celsius with 57% humidity. So this works. Uh, so in our first attempt to do a REST API call, we're doing it straight from the browser really bypassing the server. And we're using the geolocation API to get our position. And we do the fetch call here. Now this works, but it has one kind of big ish drawback is that we have the application ID, our application key here in plain text in, in the client application. And, and that's usually not what you want to do. So secrets are better kept on the server where they're secure. So if you're calling an API that needs to needs an API key or something that's kind of secret, it's better to do that on the server. So this is where we get into uh, Spring Boot and, and using the Spring Boot web client to do a REST API call. So let's open up our, our sidebar here again. And what I want to do is create a new VOD Fusion endpoint that we can use to communicate with the server with. So I'll create a new endpoint. We'll call it weather endpoint with Java. And this will just be an endpoint annotation that will make all the methods here accessible to the to the client and anonymous allowed because I'm not gonna set up any security right now. Now before I can start using the web client, I need to actually uh, do a couple of things. So what I want to do is let's go and close our currently running application. And first thing I need to do is go into my POM XML, add a new dependency. So it'll be from the same group ID Spring uh, Boot, but we're going to use Spring Boot Starter Webflux. Uh, Webflux that one. All right. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to store that API key somewhere safe. So for that, I'm going to create a environment file. So just a .env file. And here I'm going to export uh, whether API key is equal to this secret key that we have, like so. And because I don't want that to kind of leak out anywhere, I'm going to add it to my git ignore so that uh, this is staying on my computer. It's not going anywhere. So I'm adding it there. And in order for me now to be able to load that, what I'll do is I'll call uh, source and then dot env to load it. And then after that, I can use the Maven wrapper to start up the application again. All right, so let's go back into our endpoint. And what we can do now is use the value annotation to access that environment variable that we have. So we'll do weather API key. So the way it gets transformed is lowercase and dots instead of dots instead of the underscores. And this will be a private string API key like this. All right, then I'll create a, a constructor here that will take in the web client builder. So web client builder, and what we'll do then is, is uh, well actually let's create a new 
private web client client and then we'll say this dot client is equal to builder dot base URL and then we need the base URL so let's go and copy that over from here that's the base URL and we'll build that okay so that, that'll take care of creating a client that we can use for for calling it now the next thing I want to do is just create some basic Java types for the weather information that we get. Now because we don't actually access all the data in that big response, I'm only going to uh, create or model those uh, fields that we actually need. So I'll just inline a couple of classes here. So we'll have a public static class weather and weather will have a public string name for the name and then we'll have a public main just sticking to the same naming structure as that Jason had so public static class main we'll then have in here public double uh, temp and public double humidity like that and because we're not using all of the attributes we need to use Jason ignore properties ignore unknown is equal to true like this so that way it's not going to complain about us only only uh, mapping a couple of those values so this will take care of our our data model on the back end here and we can now create a endpoint call that our browser can call on the server so we'll call it public return a uh, weather object and we'll call this get weather and it'll take in double uh, latitude double longitude or long, and then we need to use the client to actually call that all right so what we want to do here is we want to return what we get back from calling the client with a get method and we need to add all those URI parameters there. We can do that using the URI function. And first of all, we need to define the path, which will just be the base path. And let's make this a little bit more legible. So we'll do that. And then we'll do a query parameter. First one will be latitude. And we'll just do the latitude to string. And we'll do a couple others. So we'll need to do the longitude, the units, which will just be a hard coded metric. And then finally, we need the API key, which is our API key. And then we can call build on this to. Uh, to return. All right. And then when we have this, we can call retrieve and take whatever we get back to an entity of weather.class type. And I'm going to call block here to make this a synchronous call because uh, I'm not in a reactive situation where I could return the mono that I would otherwise get here and then I'll just call get body which is the actual uh, weather class here all right so all right so a little bit of code here um, we define the client first of all to use the base URL here and then when we actually get the weather we first of all configure the URI to have the right query parameters then we fetch it we convert that to a weather class, and then we get the body, which we return. All right, so let's go back into our code now here and change how we do things. So first of all, now the weather doesn't need to be of type any, it can be of type weather. So that's gonna be nice, but otherwise it can also be 
undefined because it's not defined from the beginning. So instead of having to call the fetch API directly now, we can just await the weather endpoints, get weather, and then we can again pass in the position coordinates, latitude, position coordinates, longitude, like this. What happens now, hopefully, is that we delegate the fetch to the server, which now kind of maintains our application key securely there and returns the only the part of the result that we need for this. So you can see that now we got the result back, the same result that we had previously, but we have now the nice benefit of actually having, for instance, autocomplete here because we have the type so we can uh, get uh, hold of the right information here. But more importantly, we're no longer exposing that API key in the client side code. So uh, we've made our application a little bit more secure. All right, so there you had it. Two different ways you can do REST API calls in a bot infusion application. The first one being directly from the browser using the fetch API and the second being on the server in Spring Boot using the web client. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.